Hey, horror fans, once again, it is me, the Horror Miser Money G. It's time to review the sequel to 2018 surprise hit of the summer, The Meg. This one is called Meg to the Trench. <laughs> To the Trench is a 2023 science fiction action film. It was directed by Brian Wheatley. It was written by John Holber, Eric Holber, and Dean Jogarius. Now, the film stars Jason Stratham, Wu Jing, Sophia Kai, Paige Kennedy, Cliff Curtis, and Sienna Gilroy. Now, in this film, a research team encounters multiple threats while exploring the depths of the ocean, including a malevolent mining operation. And of course, let's not forget about the Megs. <laughs> now, out of all the shark attack films that we've seen as horror fans throughout the years, the one that we've seen more recently are the ones that feature the prehistoric shark is called the Megalodon. Now, most of these have been, you know, B-movie, low-budget films that have aired on the Sci-Fi channel. You know, nothing real fascinating, you know, probably starring some C or B-list stars. You might say a major star on, on these films, but there have been plenty of them been airing on the Sci-Fi channel, mostly produced by the Asylum, the Asylum uh, Movie Production Company. Now, some of these movies were called Mega Shark. It was Mega Shark this, Mega Shark that, uh, while others were simply called Meleg uh, Megalodon, Megalodon Rising, or Shark Attack 3 Megalodon. You know, always had the Megalodon. That's what all of a sudden decided to not call the Mega Shark, decided to call it by its real name, a Megalodon. However, in 2018, Warner Brothers released the first major production that features this ferocious creature and is also based on the 1997 science fiction novel by Steve Alton. It was called The Meg. Now, that film starred action star Jason Statham, along with Chinese actress uh, Li Bingbing, and the film would be the surprise hit of the summer, over earning over $530 million worldwide. So, it was a very surprise hit of the fun summer. I thought I, I enjoyed the film. I thought it was a nice popcorn fun film. It was ridiculous at some points, but it was a pretty popular film, and like I said, it was a surprise hit of the summer back in 2018. So, of course, it's no surprise that Warner Brothers were greenlit a sequel, uh, again, based upon a novel by Steve Alton, uh, 1999 The Trench. This one is called Meg 2 The Trench. Now, taking place, taking place five years after the events of the first film, Jonas Taylor, Jason Stason's character, has become Mangling's legal guardian after the death of her mother, Sunyan. Kind of explains why Lee Bingbang is not in this particular film. Now, Taylor, along with her uncle and Sun Ying's brother, uh, Jim Jin Sang, are raising her together while also exploring more of the Mariana Trench. There are some unexplored areas that they're looking into. And that's what based that's what we see while this film begins. Now, we also learned that while exploring the unexplored area of the trench, they also discovered a baby Meg, who Jim Jim calls uh, Hakia. I think I pronounced that right. And has been training her in captivity in Huan. Now, while exploring the trench, the team discovered that someone is doing illegal mining there, and he also discovered more megs, which was caused the baby meg to escape because it's mating season all of a sudden. Now, of course, crazy shit happens that will cause Jonas and his team to fight for their lives and also find a way not only to stop three megalodons, but also find out who's doing illegal mining as well. So that's basically what the whole plot of the movie is. Well, you really got to get credit to English film director Ben Wheatley and screenwriters John, Eric, and Dean as they basically have thrown everything but the kitchen sink in this story. Like I said, not only do you have three megalodons, but you also have to find out who's doing the illegal mining in here. What the hell is going on here? Now, having three megalodons along with the subplot about the illegal, illegal mining and who's responsible Really ups the ante here, and I got to give Ben credit. He does a good job on juggling all the elements in the film. Now, don't expect any thought-provoking messages, any type of seriousness in this film, because you're not going to get this in this film. It's just like the first make film. I mean, there is plenty of campiness, silliness, and zaniness that takes place in this film, just like it did in the first film. As I explained before, that's what this film is all about. If you're expecting anything like Jaws or even Deep Blue Sea, you're not going to get that in this film. Now, there's plenty of action that does take place, whether it's inside the trench, on the ocean floor, or even on land. <laughs> we got action all over the place that I believe 
most audiences are going to love seeing. And it's mainly because of Jason Statham. He does a good job of playing Jonas. You know, a man of action who will do what is necessary, not only to take Ming Ling, but his team as well. And this is what I think really uh, makes the film so enjoyable is because of Jason Statham. He's a great leaning man. He's a great man of action. I think of all the characters he has played, I think this is most reasonable one because he's you know he's still got that gruff exterior because that's what jason zayton does well but here he plays a more guardian type role especially when it comes to uh mei ying now it was nice seeing sophia kai back playing mei ying and she basically stole basically stole every scene in the first movie and you know, I really did enjoy what she does here in this film. She's a little bit more grown up. She wants more responsibility. I think because she wants to honor her mother. Now, also back are Paige Kennedy as DJ and Cliff Curdy as Mac, as they all have great chemistry together. And I really love what they did to DJ's character in this film. As he has some funny moments in this film as well. Not like in the first film. I won't reveal what it is, but what he does in this film, I really like. I really want. They did a good job what they did with his character. Now, if there is one problem that I have with this film is that they added something that I don't believe it was really necessary. It really doesn't add anything else to the film. I guess they added it in because they just wanted to have Jason Stape and does what he does best. And that's kick human ass and not just Meg ass in this particular film. Now, when watching this film, it's obviously that there are other elements of other adventure or I guess you could say shark attack films or even some other films. You know, there's elements of Deep Blue Sea, the Abyss, and Jaws vibes, but there's definitely Jurassic World vibe in this particular film. <laughs> I won't reveal what it is, but when you see them, you're definitely going to get, wait a minute, I saw that in Jurassic World. But I believe most fans won't mind that. Some people will, some people might. I don't know. I really didn't mind it, but you can actually tell the elements when you see them. Also, the CGI seems a bit wonky at times, especially during the third act, and I also believe this film is about 15 minutes too long, mainly because of the added element uh, that they decided to bring in this film. Like I said before, it really doesn't add anything more to this film. As a matter of fact, I think it kind of wastes a certain uh, person's a role in the particular film. I know why they added that person into the film, but I think we really didn't need that in here. But, you know, again, this film isn't supposed to be taken super seriously at all. It's simply a fun, zany popcorn film. We got plenty of action, some good... We had plenty of action, some good acting, and some very funny moments. So I really did enjoy the film. Like I said before, to me, it's kind of about 10 to 15 minutes too long. So I'm going to give the Meg to Trench three out of my five bloody gold coins. Yes, giving it three out of my five bloody gold coins. It's another zany, uh, very zany, crazy popcorn film. You know, like I said, CGI is a bit wonky at times. And like I said, there's an element of the film that really wasn't needed, but I still enjoyed the film. And I bet you that if this film makes money just like this first one did, we're probably going to get make three. <laughs> so there you have it, horror fans. That is my review and review and video of the Meg, the Trench, the uh, Meg to the Trench. Hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, and share because it does help out with that YouTube algorithm. Have you seen the Meg to the Trench? What do you thought about it? Leave your comments in the comments section below and tell me what you thought about the film. Also, if you're new here, please hit that subscriber button. Ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified anytime when I put a new video such as this one. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as a horror miser, Monty G. And always remember that horror rules. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next video. That guy, stay safe out there.